Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Europe in Universalis 4, where we are going to be playing with the Golden Century. Now, I did put out two videos already. Those are up on YouTube, which you can find at youtube.com slash Mordred Viking. So if you've not had a chance to see what's uh, see those yet, you will probably be, be at a bit of a loss as to what on earth is going on. Raiding party! Hey, League of Average Gaming, thank you very much for the raid, and welcome to your viewers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, how have you been finding the game so far? I've literally just started today. So, um, there we go. So, what has happened so far? Well, we are playing as... Let me see if I can get this right. Bets... Simisaraka. Huzzah! Ah, uh, which are these red ships over here? We are in Madagascar. We are currently a tribal chieftain, but we are hoping to become a pirate republic. And not just hoping, we are going to become a pirate republic. What resources do I have in my area? Um, slaves. Lots and lots and lots and lots of slaves. So many slaves. Why not give everything. You won't take to the green guy. Um, because I don't really want to make the green guy the most powerful. I'd like to keep a balance of power with me in charge. So I'd like to become the biggest and then basically just split these guys down. Plus I can then do humiliation wars against them in order to get my power projection up. That's another reason. Um, but actually giving it to green is not a terrible idea because that would allow me to block Kilwa. And Kilwa is the biggest threat here. We'll, we'll, we'll decide when we get to that. So what's happened? We are currently in a war for the blue. Blue is one of my rivals. Dark blue, that is. Also known as Imarina. We are allied to green. Green's our ally. Huzzah! Uh, do, 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 do. Messed around looking at the pirate stuff and been playing a Tunis game, checking out the mission tree. Nice. Got the money to resub now, says Neon. Thank you very much for that. Um, I know it came up. Yay, Neon, thank you very much for the sub. I really do appreciate that. Bacon gave me some bits. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Jessica, what should we call the baby? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, eight months. Now I have to start thinking about names. Next month, Jessica. Next month. I mean, Dana. Wow, I am not with it today. By the way, I am operating on about four hours of very heavily interrupted sleep. So if I'm feeling or looking and sounding a little bit wacky, that is why. Uh, basically, I was up recording until about... 8 o'clock this morning, plus doing all of my paperwork. So my Patreon and Twitch sub names are now up to date, so we can go ahead with that. And I was recording, rendering, uploading this, and then had to set my alarm for 11 o'clock to do the premiere. So watched the premiere and then just went straight back to sleep. So I am just kind of a bit loopy right now. And I haven't had any tea yet. It's still brewing. I got up 15 minutes before the stream started. Um... So yeah, we're at war with Imarina right now, who's our rival. We're also rivals with Sakalava, which is the light blue. Uh, they are the most powerful on the island right now. They have 29 development. These guys have, like, less. And we have 19. Then these guys, I think, had 11. Uh, there was another power here, which we gave to green already. That's who was allied with dark blue. Light blue and green are allied, so we need to fight these guys, knock them out, Invade blue, which will mean we're in a war together. Oh, we're we're in a war together with green against dark blue. Declare war on light blue, which means that green cannot answer the call because they're already in a war together with me. Invade them, defeat them, and then piece them out, and then dark blue. So there's going to be probably some ticking war school we'll need to deal with, but that's fine. Uh, another thing that I am doing right now is there's a bit of a race going on. We're trying to siege down their capital. We do have a head start and they're trying to siege down mine. One thing which has occurred to me is we could totally do a defensiveness edict, which will slow them down by 33%. We have a very, 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 very slight boost because we have some professionalism, which increases my siege ability by 1.6, and neither of our generals have siege tick. Hey, Jordine. Hey, Mordred, finally got a chance to catch one of your streams live instead of just watching on YouTube videos. Well, welcome to the live stream. Always an absolute pleasure to see some uh, new people here. Yes, we are red. We are Betsy Misaraka. I'm getting better at saying that. So, 
There is supposed to be a third video out where we talk about all of the changes to the idea groups because they are pretty hefty, as you can see here, just from innovativeness. They've got innovativeness gain, innovative ideas now have an innovativeness gain and new icons. A bunch of these have changed. I am posting out a video of that, which has basically been cut out from the two videos I released earlier. That will be on YouTube as soon as I have permission from uh, Paradox to post it, because I don't know if you can post that type of thing during the embargo. Probably, because that stuff was announced on uh, the forums, but we'll see. Um, I don't remember why that was relevant. It's relevant, I'm sure it is. Right, I'm going to have some tea because, oh my gosh, I need it. What tech are we on? We are pre-feudal. Although I think we are a 333. 334, right, because we teched up in military. So the reason that we sparked this war off is we got to military 4 before Dark Blue. We were able to crush Dark Blue in the war, plus green was called in, and then we declared war on Light Blue. Light Blue has unfortunately managed to catch up with us, but we outnumber them. Uh, actually, no, they outnumber us, but I'm building some new troops. But we do have a much better general. Our general is 4 shock to their 2 shock. They do have 2 cavalry, which is a problem. But my armies are drilled, kind of. And we also have some professionalism, which they do not. So we do have more damage output, but we need to pick our fights extremely carefully. Uh, the other thing is I am trying to repair my fleet right now. So that we can send them out to attack this fleet. Destroy that. And then hopefully get a blockade going on, which will make us go even better. And yes, I know I can get the middle technology. I'm actually getting feudalism right now from Kilwa. So if we go to the institutions map mode, we can see that I've currently got 44% feudalism in Antankara. And then once we have it in Antankara, it will spread pretty quickly to the rest of my stuff, hopefully. Uh, then I'll be able to adopt feudalism and get a couple more technologies without the 50% debuff. Although, Renaissance has also spawned. So we are now 59% behind in terms of technology. Perfectly timed this to finish the two YouTube videos you did for this. Oh, excellent, Sparrow. <clears throat> Took a break from Anthem Alpha to watch this. Well, I hope it's worth it. And hello, everyone. Hello, 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 hello. Now watch the blue is going to win the siege first. Yeah, they might do. But uh, if, if they do, I should have more troops than them because I am recruiting two more infantry. And I do have the defensiveness thing on. Although, why is their bar now ahead of mine? Wait, what? They have minus 50% siege ability, so... Do we? Oh no, that's the uh, overall percentage. I have spy network on them as well, so their defensiveness is terrible. Well, mine is really, really strong, so how are they ahead of me? Oh, did I? Oh, I failed one, that's why. As did they, I think. Oh, you know what? You can go and capture these. Because they're not going to come fight us immediately. And we can cause them some war score problems. Should I peace out Dark Blue? No. Because if I peace out Dark Blue, then I am no longer in a war with Green, and Green will accept the defensive call. Because they are still allied with Sakalava. They just don't get the call uh, to join the war when I declared war on light blue. So the whole reason I'm doing this while this is fully occupied is that green doesn't join the war against me. Alright, we're at 28, they're at 42. It's looking good. 21 to 42. That defensiveness edict has really helped actually. 14 to 42. Slowly but surely taking all the territory. We are going to be suffering some debt probably after this, but if this allows me to secure Madagascar in one brutal stroke, then I am totally okay with that. I think that's a very, very good gamble. We're at 7, they're at 35. Okay, we're definitely going to win this siege. It's fine. We're definitely probably going to win this siege. And there it is! Wow, we got lucky. So, 94% with Saklava. I definitely want that. 
Can I give this to you? No, because green's not in the war, so I would have to take it myself. I could just full annex them and then sell them that province. I think I'm going to leave them as an OPM for now. It's unlikely that Kilwa will join them. I could also vassalize them. That's probably the better option. So we vassalize dark blue, we vassalize light blue, and we keep green as an ally for now. This is going to cause some aggressive expansion, but because we're overseas, I doubt that Kilwa is going to care very much. And even if they do, they have problems elsewhere. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Which pieces you out? And then I'm going to piece you out once I have a diplomat. And I'm going to do this for a vassal. So Emira is going to get annoyed, but Emira is my ally. No, Emira is my <laughs> Emira is my vassal, so I really don't care. This is fine. Send demand. All right. So how strong are the vassals compared to me? That's a problem. Relative power is pretty high, and I'm about to give them another territory. So what I probably should have done here is taken Bara from dark blue, then giving it to light blue. Because I'm about to have to give dark blue another province. But we're at the seven provinces that we need. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven to form the Pirate Republic. We cannot grow any larger than seven provinces, so this is the maximum size until we finish all the government reforms and reform to monarchy or republic. Am I going to colonize Africa and the uninhabited islands around me? I have not decided. Colonization would be a good thing. <clears throat> um, because it will give me islands and places to base pirates from so I can privateer more stuff. So it's possible, but I haven't decided. Probably. Hey, Helson. Just woke up trying to catch up on YouTube. Well, <laughs> you'll have to catch up on that after this. Is there a mechanics reason not to m fabricate another claim with the spy network? Um, not really. I just wanted the spy network as high as possible with light blue because then the sieges go faster. So with 100% spy network against light blue, I was getting a 20% siege bonus. Anyway, we can cancel you because you're now a an subject. And we are going to try and improve relations with own subject nations. Uh... Why are you idle? You should not be idle. Oh, because, yeah, we sent a diplomat less than a year, uh, month ago. Fine. You're allowed to be idle. Let's send you back home. In fact, you can just sit in marina at this point, And then you can start drilling again. Safely. Oh. Now that's interesting. So Anton Morrow broke their alliance and then immediately rivaled me. Well, I'm immediately going to rival you right back again. So there. I gave you land. How on earth did their relations flip so quickly? Wait, they're a different religion? Oh, they're Sunni. Declared war on ally. Aggressive expansion. We only had four, 15 aggressive expansion. Oh, they want the provinces. And they want my subjects' provinces. That's what flipped it. Extreme monsoon in... Betsimaraska. Raka. It's not an S. I'll take the devastation. Thank you very much. And I ended that war with no loans, which is really quite amazing for me. And we are also going to be over the force limit. I do need to core some territories. Let's do that first. How badly over the force limit am I? I'm actually under it now. Oh, sweet. And we fulfilled a mission. The slave trade. Gain to mercantilism, gain 10% trade efficiency. Must have at least four slave-producing provinces. Okay. 
There are a lot of slave provinces here. The next thing that I want to do is re-mothball you. Grab you. Now, I do still not have enough sailors. I'm going to, for the time being, send you to protect trade in Zanzibar. I am hoping that with my extended coastline, I can get more sailors coming in. Is this a DLC or a general update? This is a DLC, Golden Century. And I really wish... So I have applied to Paradox to become an affiliate on their store, so if you buy the game through me, then I'll also get a little bit of a cut. Unfortunately, that uh, application hasn't been processed yet. So hopefully in a day or two, I can get that for you. Which helps us both, because then you get a game and I get some money. Am I going to save my Caribbean brothers before the distress British destroy them? Um, they're not pirates yet, so no. If they go to war against you, you can just feed them to the light blue vassal. That is true. Or I could turn them into a vassal of my own. Another one, a third one. Yeah, it's an immersion pack, so it is a small update. It's, it's not like a full-on one like uh, Dharma was. But it does come with the new pirate mechanics, which unfortunately I can't show you yet, but hopefully soon I can. And it also gives a bunch of things to North Africa and to Spain. As well as a nice little button right here, flagships. Unfortunately, I can't build a flagship until we have at least 1,500 sailors employed. So we're actually a third of the way there. And I would like to hit that button as soon as we can, because I, from what I remember from the dev diaries, flagships are really strong. Each nation can build just one, but those flagships can themselves be upgraded with special modules, which gives them additional abilities, or just makes them really, really, really good in a fight. Uh, for those of you who have not yet seen the first two episodes up on YouTube, um, Betsy Maraska have plus 20% national sailor modifier, which is super useful because we are already short on sailors. With eight light ships protecting trade right now, we're using eight sailors and we generate five, and that's with my modifier. So... Yeah, the sailor maintenance, sorry, the uh, sailor modifier is going to be really good. And then also the capstone is a sailor maintenance modifier, which means that we can have a lot of small ships out on missions over time, which is going to be fantastic. Uh, morale hit when losing a ship is a humongous bonus. That means every time a ship gets sunk in naval combat, the amount of morale you lose, which is significant, is reduced. And then that combined with naval ideas means you'll have a minus 40% morale hit when losing a ship, which basically means losing ships is not going to impact us. Well, it does. It's going to still be a 60% hit, but um, compared to our opponents, we can go into fights with much, much smaller fleets and still come out victorious. Uh, garrison size increased by 20%. That means that enemy siege armies need to have more troops in them, so if we can... Uh, build up the attrition modifiers through defensive ideas, then that's going to be really good and cost them a lot. Embargo efficiency and privateer efficiency, obviously because we're pirates. Indivisible many. National unrest minus one is just useful for keeping people uh, in check. Autonomy change 0.5, nice for when we take new territories. Chance to capture enemy ships plus 20%. Can you see the pirate theme coming through here? I'm definitely feeling a bit of a pirate theme coming through. Um, which means that we can have a higher chance of capturing ships, especially when combined with the naval doctrine when that becomes available. Uh, which I'll almost certainly make capture chance as well. So we're going to be capturing a lot of ships in these naval battles. Then we've got yearly legitimacy plus one. Not sure that's going to be useful when we switch to a republic. We'll need to see if that flips or if it just becomes useless. And then Diplo relations, sorry, Diplo reputation plus one, which is nice for getting alliances and also when annexing vassals. Needs a captain named Long John Silver. Eros. Will the flagship update or upgrade like normal ships? Not sure. I know very little about the flagship mechanic beyond the fact that you have modules that you can upload. Uh, Upgrade them with. And the government reforms for the pirates, I had a quick play with them before I started this series. They're pretty good. They're pretty nice. 
you can do some interesting things with them. And there are several different flavors of piracy. You can go like all out privateering. You can go for um, a pseudo merchant republic that has privateers as well, which is kind of cool. And oh, what's the third option? I don't remember what the third option is. I'm sure it's good though. <laughs> And yeah, one of the flavors of pirates gives you a CB against the entire world. It's based. It's it's basically called us versus the world. Drilling. Thank you. Yes, I must do that. Good point. And I don't think I can afford any advisors. We could tech up in Diplo, but I don't want to because I'm saving for getting feudalism. Although we are no longer getting feudalism because Kilwa is not friendly. Because Kilwa really wants our provinces. That sucks. That really sucks, actually. I have no way of getting technology. And that's dangerous. Kilwa's at war with Azuran again. This has got to be the... Oh no, this is the same war where they're fighting for Pate. Yeah, okay. Kilwa and Azuran really don't like each other. I wonder, can an alliance with Azuran be a thing that happens? I mean, it's possible. Is there an Imam mate? Huh. Theocracy. Interesting. But the most important thing is getting the liberty desire of these guys down. Now, their base liberty desire is plus 66%. That kind of sucks. Dev up the province I was getting tech before. I'm not going to do the deving up for um, tech. In fact, I should have just updated my mod. Because I hate that mechanic. If there was a way of disabling it in just base game rules, I would. When you play as a pirate republic, do you have pirate music in the background? I don't know. There are definitely new pirate tracks. Um, but I've not seen them yet. That's what I meant. What's the music track list? It's these three are the new ones, I think. I'm just going to play them because I'm curious. That's a good point. Yeah, increasing the army size would help. But I'm still losing money. I think I'm going to have to wait until I've cored those provinces and then we'll be able to do it. And I know the music's going to be loud. I did that purposefully. Alright, so and tomorrow have got feudalism. How did you get it? But that's good because it means that I now have adjacency. <laughs> you are completely isolated. I could totally just go and kill you. Kilwa does not give a damn. Mutapa cares more than Kilwa about the territories I took. Uh, you are tech four, so we, we we have tech parity, but I'm just bigger than you are, and I need to secure this island. And they're starting to claim my stuff. Although, actually, <laughs> that's a good point. I need to claim their stuff. So let's stop improving relations with you. I'll start building them by now. Okay. 
Alright, so that's the first province cord. This should start boosting us. We've also got rebels on the way, not too far off. I could humiliate them for 100 monarch points, that's true. The main thing I'm concerned about is them getting an alliance with Kilwa. Although Kilwa's already trying to claim their provinces, what are the relations between those two like? Positive, and they're increasing it. So an alliance between them and Kilwa is actually quite likely. I need to kill them. And I can state... It's a huge state. One, two, three, four, five provinces. Do it. Okay, so everything is now cored. The amount of income I'm getting is quite a lot higher, so I think I'm going to go ahead and hire two more infantry just so we go up to full strength. I feel like I'm going to have to spend Monarch points and deving my own provinces to keep my own development higher than the vassals. There's one, there's two. Any idea what I'm going to name the flagship? I think you should name it yourself, not use a subscriber name. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. 